Hello students, I hope all is well. I'm here with another tutorial. This one is for Udacity's front end nano degree. This project is the build a portfolio site. Now in this video, what I'm going to talk about is the bootstrap framework or library and how to use their grid based layout and prepare your project for submission. So let me first start by going to that project and I'm going to get a copy of the rubric and the mockup design. Now this is kind of the structure that they want us to follow and this is the rubric that they will use when they grade our project submission. So I have that project already um, loaded up here. So what I'm going to do is just walk through each uh, section of the rubric. Design, responsiveness, separation of concerns, and code quality. Go through each of these uh, individual specs and compare my project against the rubric so you guys can get an understanding of what exactly you have to do and how to prepare your project. Now starting off with design um, there's certain required elements semantics custom designs grid based style and then in responsiveness we're just going to make sure that it looks good on all devices make sure it renders properly on phones tablets and desktop make sure we're using certain meta tags making sure that our project is in um, good shape as far as organization making sure that we have the appropriate folders and the appropriate files in each folder and then making sure we're abiding by syntax standards and things of that nature like uh, indentation, no white space and things of that nature so I'm going to show you what I have here inside this particular folder I have called portfolio dash site all I have here is just basically the bootstrap um, library already here in my head tag this is coming from their content delivery network or CDN you can come to their home page and get bootstrap.com you come to the home page you scroll down and you can see it here towards the middle of the page where they have their CSS link and then their script tags here. So you can just copy them and load it in your head or you can download them yourself and then add it to your project files in the JS and CSS folders. Now in addition to Bootstrap I have an icon which will render inside of the tab right here in my title, I have the viewport, right? This is what is going to help the page um, be responsive and have my own script file, which doesn't have much in it. Now, the biggest thing that we're getting out of Bootstrap is that grid-based layout. So once you come to their home page, you go to the documentation, and you'll see they have a lot of sections here on their left sidebar they have components and inside components you can see certain um, elements that you would want to have in your page you have modals, navigation, card, carousel if you come to layout here is where they will explain the grid based layout that Bootstrap is famous for so basically Bootstrap is just a massive CSS file that has a lot of classes and styling defined and all you have to do is just give those classes to your HTML elements. As far as the grid based system you actually have to structure your elements in a certain way in order for the styling to take effect properly. So in this instance we need to have a top level div that we call a container 
And inside container, we have rows. And within rows, we have columns. Right? Now, if we go through this entire page, it'll explain it in great detail. But basically, inside each row, you can only have a maximum of 12 columns. Right? Now, they can be different sizes. Right? So the smallest being 1 and the largest being 12. You can mix up how much columns you want. So you can have any number that equals 12. So you can have four sets of three, three sets of four. You can have two sets of six, one set of 12. You can have five and seven. You can have eight and four, nine and three. You can mix and match the type of columns you have as long as they equal 12 within the uh, row parent. Now, inside of the, I guess, the design that you actually want to follow, if you visualize what we're looking at, you can see that this is probably just one small column. The rest of this is one large column, so probably three and nine. And then this second uh, row here takes up the entire width, so you can say this is column 12. Now, here at the bottom, we have three... Um, I guess columns inside the row. So three goes into 12 four times. So each of these would be column four. And you can also choose when those columns would stack on top of each other for that mobile um, responsive design. So the larger the columns, the, I guess, faster they start to stack meaning extra small, it probably wouldn't even stack on a phone view. But as soon as you go up in sizes, it will start to resize sooner. Now, in my project, you can see that I'm using semantics. I have the head header tag, I have the main tag. Um, every div has classes in it. And I am using um, Bootstraps classes, right? So the columns, rows, semantics, and that's about it for the most part. Now, to start going over the rubric, the first spec is saying that we have to have at least four images, which is basically your header image or whatever icon you choose. This, I guess, branding, wallpaper, and then three um, project images or anything you want them to be. So with that, the first spec would pass. Semantic HTML, we're using header, footer, article, section. No div or section tags are without a CSS or ID attribute. So we go through, I can see everything has at least a class or an ID on it. Nothing here is um, being wasted. Uh, custom design, you can customize text. So on my page, I just decided to use this as a, um, a navigation without any links. Basically, just the top bar. It's just an H1 tag that uh, I made um, black and the color white just to give a little distinction. So there's that and grid based layout. So we're using Bootstrap. If I were to resize the page, I can see that it starts to shrink and eventually all the columns stack on top of each other, giving us that mobile uh, design experience or rather mobile styling and responsive experience. Now, for the next spec, we have responsiveness, cross-device compatibility. So inside your DevTools, if you're using Chrome, you can tap this um, toggle device toolbar here. And at the very top, you can choose different devices. I start off using iPhone 4 because there are still people out there that have it. And as a developer, you have to pretty much 
accommodate all viewports and platforms. So here's what it looks like on iPhone 4. Nothing is coming off the page. We can see everything clearly. And this is because we have the viewport meta tag right here. Now, if we didn't have that, let's say I comment this out, we wouldn't get that look to it. It would look very terrible. So this is what helps give that responsive design. In order to write it, you just use a meta tag, and you give it two attributes. The name would be viewport. The content would be the width is equal to the device width. So whatever screen this page is being rendered on, the width will only be as wide as that instead of using explicit values like pixels. And then initial scale is just one. So with that, we get back that mobile first design. Right? Now, provide all content. All content is running on all three devices. No content should be hidden on mobile devices. Yeah, so Bootstrap takes care of all of that for you. As long as you set up your application following their grid based web design, it's going to take care of everything else for you. So that one is good. Responsive images. Now, what I did was in my styling, my style.css, I selected all images and set max width 200%. And so that way, no image would flow out of its parent container. So if I were to inspect this, and let's say I remove that, and remove this, it's going way off the screen, right? I only want it to be as wide as its container parent is or the um, width of the entire device so that's why I add the max width property which will make sure that it doesn't go off of the screen now um, I think that solves it for that the viewport which is pretty much here that's what helps the browser decide how to render some things um, Bootstrap will take care of this because of their classes and the media query they have set in them. So responsiveness is taken care of literally all by Bootstrap. We are using semantics. We are using our own style sheets for certain things. For example, like this top um, bar and this footer right here is both custom. So. We go to separation of concerns. If you look at my project um, folder, inside of it, I just have the index file. I have a README, but it's blank. I have a script file, and basically, I'm just adding a listener when it loads. I'm just going to console log admin one so I know it's working. I'm going to grab that bio image, which is right here. Once I grab it, I'm just going to add a click listener and it's going to alert. Hi, I'm Ryan. Welcome. So if we click on my icon, Hi, I'm Ryan. Welcome. Now, if we take a look at code quality, I think that solves it for separation of concerns. Project folder just has JS folder, image folder, CSS folder. Every file type is in its respective folders. So that's about it. Not too much going on there. Code quality. Um, a lot of text editors now should have plugin support where you can add little features to it. So in Atom, I can come to packages. And one of the packages I have is called Atom Beautify. All you have to do is just click it and it will reformat all your code to make it look um, good and clean. So that will help 
save and address that issue. Um, HTML documents use HTML5 doc type. Uh, we have that, so that's good. Um, code is not having trend web spaces. Again, once you use some of these plugins, they take care of all those other nuances for you. Code uses your new operating block or table content to pull the line elements once. So when quoting attribute values, use double quote marks. Alright, so again, this is just basic um, patterns. Don't use single quotations for attributes. Make sure it's always in, um, I'm sorry, make sure that it's not in apostrophe, rather that the attribute values are inside of quotation marks. Um, styling rules, CSS formatting rules, so make sure that inside your CSS file you're not leaving any trailing spaces. Every style is serving a specific purpose, or I'm sorry, purpose, and that each of them have a space between them. Now, if you look at um, Styling rules, we're using dots for classes and hashtags or pound signs for IDs and general meta rules, HTML templates and documents to use F. Adam does that for you. Well, if you're using Adam and then you want to just create like a new HTML document, for example, let's say you file, let's say main.html in Atom, if you just type in HTML, it scaffolds a basic page skeleton and it has that meta tag right there. So for those who don't have the text editor that does that, all you have to do is just create a meta tag with one attribute char set equals UTF-8. Now with that, I think that's about it. There's not much to this project. It's a lot of specs, but Bootstrap handles a lot of them. All you have to do is just set up the basic structure and fill in the content. And you can let Bootstrap's classes and CSS style and take care of everything else. So with that, I hope this tutorial helps. If you have any questions, just leave a comment in the section below. I'm going to add some resources to the description. And with that, I hope you have a good day and take care.